Call the meeting of the Urbana Historic Preservation Commission to order. Could we have roll call, please? Here. 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 Okay, we have a quorum. Uh, I don't think we have any changes to the agenda, so the next item is approval of the minutes from our last meeting, October 12th. Um, I have a name correction and others present. Uh, on the second line, the name S E O K, it should be W O O rather than W A. And on the top of page two under written communications, I'm wondering if we could further clarify um, what the letter was from Ted Christie by saying um, in response to the commission's letter regarding Mumford, Mumford houses, um, I don't know how we want to say it, red X in the campus master plan update. It was a letter about the red X, yes. Um, okay, anybody else? Well, I didn't notice anything else wrong, so I'll move that we approve the minutes as amend. Oh, yeah, I was just gonna throw out one other thing. On the okay. uh, uh, second paragraph under Mumford House, it said Mr. Metcalf shared her concern. He mentioned that last spring he was giving a course on cultural heritage. I was actually taking a course. So oh. That's, <laughs> um, what, I, would I would love to teach that someday, but that wasn't actually what I was, was amazed. Happening. I, just, thought, uh, I was he, learning from. He finds time to teach too. I, <laughs> when I read that, I thought, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. What paragraph was that again? The second paragraph under Mumford House, Monitoring of Historic Properties, Section 10. Second sentence. Got okay. it. <coughs> okay, now. Now, I would like to move that we uh, approve the minutes as amended. Second. It's been moved by Trent, seconded by Kim. Any other? Remarks, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The minutes as amended are unanimously approved. Uh, written communications are next. Do we have anything? We do not. Okay. Um, next is audience participation. Is there anyone who doesn't want to speak about a particular matter that's on the agenda that wishes to speak during this? Yes. See, I'll, See sign I'll sign in. in please. Hi, I'm Dennis Roberts. Um, I live here in East Urbana. And I just wanted to bring to your attention something that's happened already in the past. But uh, if you attended the Boneyard uh, Arts Festival on uh, April 14th on uh, Saturday, I just wanted you to know that there was a dedication of another uh, uh, plaque, memorial plaque, in the Joseph W. Royer Arts and Architecture District. And this uh, plaque was uh, placed on the building, the Cohen Building, at the corner of Ray Street and Main. It's at 136 West Main Street. And it signifies the importance of Nate Cohen in our community uh, historically. Uh, he was uh, an avid uh, musician and arts uh, associated person, an opera singer of note in the community, performed a lot of art in his home on Elm Street, and he owned a rather beautiful building on the, that he had built for him uh, in um, 1907. It was completed at the corner of uh, Race and Main Street. Um, and uh, he was known as a cigar uh, connoisseur and seller. He had been rolling cigars since he was a young man in, um, in Ohio. And uh, it sustained him in between singing jobs for most of his life. So uh, the plaque commemorates his work, his personality, um, the building itself, which uh, is um, generally ag agreed upon that it was a broader design. And as a matter of fact, uh, four p five pages in Brian Adams' biography of a Royer uh, are devoted to the Cohen building. 
and his history. So if you have time on Main Street, uh, look for the plaque. It's on the north side of the street. And uh, you may not have um, heard it about the dedication or noticed the article in the um, program, but uh, I just thought I'd bring it to your attention. Thank you. And I'm going to be supportive of, uh, I'm going to be quite interested to hear the discussion later on about the uh, designation of um, um, the registry, the National um, Historic Register for uh, interesting uh, historic places in our downtown. So Janice. I'll wait for that discussion. How, how did the plaque, did you, who approached the owner or how did that come to get put up there? Um, I've been um, promoting the uh, placement of plaques in the downtown because I think it's very important and we have so many uniquely um, positioned buildings in our community that are signed by Royer. Uh, as you know, the uh, HBC at an earlier era helped to um, print the uh, brochure that mm -hmm. describes the Royer buildings. Um, but in the, of late, um, all the plaques have been uh, purchased by the property owners. So uh, uh, Don Maloney uh, is the owner of the Cohen Building, and he was. In, um, I talked to him about it about two years ago, and he was very interested in doing it. He thought that would also uh, draw some attention to the re the um, the revitalization of the building that he's doing, which is actually revealing some of its historic uh, qualities on the inside. He's removing um, carpeting and drop ceilings, and there's some beautiful architecture inside there. So he supported that. He paid for that completely in the installation. Okay. And yes. um, I remember an old guy that lived on Elm Street named Saul Cohen. Yes. S O L, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, is Saul. His is brother, son? Son. Son. Yeah, Nate had three, three children um, Sydney, Saul, and. Uh, okay, now I just forgot the, the third son's <laughs> name. Uh, uh, both, uh, two of them were uh, musicians. Saul was, yeah. Saul was, yes. And, um, and then one of them uh, went into business with his father, Sidney. He was, um, he was uh, more of a businessman. So, uh, yeah, Saul, it's very interesting. Um, Saul was, uh, was uh, very well known and went to work in um, California, and he conducted the um, Los Angeles Symphony for several years. So his house was moved, actually, that home was moved from Elm Street, and it's now on East Green Street in East Urbana. So, um, okay. yeah, that's okay. it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Actually, I have a question, Dennis. Have you, did you approach the owner about possibly getting that building landmarked? Because I talked to him about it on the very first, first Friday. Yes. And he seemed very interested, but I, didn't, I don't know if he ever went any further with it. I'm just wondering if you had any discussion with him on yeah, that. Yeah, I did. And, okay, the third son's name was Julius. And, um, yes, as a matter of fact, he's quite an advocate for creating a, uh, a district in the downtown where people could uh, improve their edifices and um, other things using the National Registry um, tax credits. Mm -hmm. So he said that he, w he, he strongly supported making the district. Um, he might have been one of the people who actually initiated the conversation. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't know how it got onto the agenda today, but I noticed it and I'm very interested in it to myself. Great. Thanks, Dennis. Okay, thanks. Does anyone else in the audience wish to speak about general issues and preservation? Okay. Uh, next, we have continued public hearings. I open uh, HP-2018-COA-02, a request by Pierre Moulin for a certificate of appropriateness to modify approved plans regarding a small number of windows at 1404 South Lincoln Avenue. Alice, I need to recuse myself due to a conflict of interest. Okay, thank you. And we have Kevin Garcia. Yay. Yes. Good evening. It's been a while. It has. <laughs> it's good to see you all. Happy Preservation Month, by the way. Yes. Happy Preservation Month to all. Okay, so, um, so this is um, 
This is an application for a certificate of appropriateness to uh, modify plans from the uh, previously approved certificate of appropriateness um, that was issued uh, for case uh, HP 2017 COA01 uh, for the Zeta Tau Alpha sorority house, which is an Urbana landmark. Um, and this request um, includes, um, or the request is to replace um, two non-original windows on the north and east floor elevations um, to install salvaged original windows on the north elevation um, as well as uh, on the west uh, elevation of the uh, 1980s kitchen edition um, and then to replace three damaged uh, below grade um, uh, original windows with new windows. Um, so table 12.1 of the zoning ordinance requires certificate, certificates of appropriateness for uh, making changes to windows on historic landmarks. Um, so that's why this case uh, is being brought forward tonight. Um, I'll just run through, uh, I think briefly I'll run through the um, the elevations here and, and point out the, um, the proposed changes uh, that I just, just described. Um, and then I'll, I'll move along to the, uh, to the certificate of appropriateness criteria. Um, so the first proposed change um, is on the, let's see, um, this is on the east elevation. So it's the, this window on the, um, on the third floor. Um, and that is to, um, so that would be to uh, remove the existing non-original window uh, and then install new metal sash casements to match um, the existing uh, windows. Um, so that's uh, number one. Um, number two, let's see. Uh, sorry, this is kind of small. Um, let's see. Okay, number two, here we are on the north elevation. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Um, again, on the third floor, um, there's a proposal to um, remove, um, there's existing plywood infill there, um, and then it would be installing a new uh, metal uh, sash casement window in that existing opening, um, again, to match the existing uh, style of the windows. Uh, number three, um, actually, let me, I'll talk about the, let's see, okay. Um, number three is to, um, hold on a second. I had a supplemental, a supplemental memo as well that went out, so I want to make sure I'm getting, getting all of these correct. So let me move along to the, to the next exhibit um, to talk about, um, okay, that's right. So that is, that is right. Um, this window um, here in the basement is, is still proposed uh, to be replaced with an existing salvaged window. Um, and then the two over here to the right, um, those ones are being proposed uh, to, uh, to be replaced with new windows. Um, and then on the front of the building, there's also another uh, basement window that's being proposed um, for a new window. Um, and I do want to point out that um, there is an administratively approved certificate of appropriateness to reopen the window wells um, that these these windows are in. So these windows, all of the basement windows, have been covered up for um, for decades. Um, so part of um, part of the the remodeling um, and renovation of the building was to put um, to put a an apartment in the basement. Um, to reopen those window wells, um, and so these windows are, are proposed for for the um, those basement or that basement unit. Okay, let's go back to the. Uh, okay. Um, and then um, another uh, proposal that's part of 
uh, that's part of this request. Um, uh, these windows, this window here, this window here, and then this window here, um, were already approved um, to be um, to be filled in with um, with existing uh, salvaged windows. Um, but I think there's just more detail on here. Um, perhaps um, uh, if the architect uh, would like to to speak about that, or if the owner would like to speak about that. Um, it looked pretty similar uh, to their earlier request to me. That was already approved. Okay, and then the final, uh, the final request is on the, so it's on the, the back side of the building. Um, if you'll recall, I don't have a plan view uh, here to look at. But if you'll recall, the, the kitchen addition here is on the uh, northeast side of the building. Um, and then uh, on, on this side, the west side that you're looking at, that's the courtyard area. Um, so this proposal is to uh, put a new infill window in this 1980s kitchen addition um, that's there because there's no, there's no opening there right now. So that's a... Uh, summary of the proposed changes. Um, just go through the, the requirements for a certificate of appropriateness real quick, um, as, as well as the, a staff analysis for each of these. Um, the first requirement is to maintain the significant original qualities and character um, of, you know, of the landmark. Um, and the staff analysis is that the uh, the two above grade windows that will be replaced are not original to the building. And they'll be replaced with, um, with good, um, with uh, appropriate replacements. Um, and the three original windows, the subgrade basement windows that, um, that will be replaced are below grade. And as I mentioned, they were, they were covered up long ago uh, when the window wells were filled in. And then the remaining windows are going to be reused, um, original salvaged windows. Criteria number two is to retain and preserve the historic character of a property. Um, staff doesn't feel that the proposal will change the historic character of the property. Um, let's see, the third criteria um, is to retain and preserve. Sorry, I'm working with two memos here. Okay. Third criteria is to retain and preserve changes to a property that have acquired historic significance in their own right. Um, and staff doesn't feel that the proposal will affect any parts of the building um, that have become historically significant in their own right. Um, the 1980s kitchen addition, which will have that, um, that new window uh, put into it um, is not historically significant. Um, and again, those subgrade windows uh, were abandoned long ago. Uh, the next criteria is to preserve distinctive uh, materials, uh, features, finishes, and construction techniques. Um, and the staff analysis is that they will be using original salvaged windows where possible. Um, and the final criteria is to repair rather than replace deteriorated historic features, um, but where the severity of deterioration requires replacement of a distinctive feature, the new feature will match the old in design, color, texture, and where possible, uh, materials. Um, and staff finds that the, uh, the replacement windows that they are proposing will match the style um, of the existing windows. And I did include um, in the supplemental memo that I believe you all have now, um, in Exhibit C, um, you have the window details. So if you'd like to, to look at those in depth um, as part of your analysis, um, those are, are available for you. Uh, overall, the staff finds that this proposal meets all of the requirements for a certificate of appropriateness. So the Historic Preservation Commission has uh, three options in this case. You can grant the Certificate of Appropriateness. Um, you can grant the Certificate of Appropriateness um, with certain conditions, or you can deny the Certificate of Appropriateness. 
Um, staff recommends that you approve the certificate of appropriateness uh, based on our analysis. That concludes my report. I'll take any questions if you have them. Thanks. Any questions of Kevin? No? No? Okay. Okay. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Next, uh, would the property owner and his representative wish to speak? Write our name, okay? And happy Preservation Month to both of you as well. Yes, happy Preservation Month to all of you too. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, maybe let me um, maybe uh, just outline the reasons for, for, for those little changes. Um, it's really to improve livability. As uh, Kevin said, we're going to have a basement apartment which we did not contemplate uh, back uh, last year. And uh, so having quality windows in the basement is, is important because this will be three bedrooms. Um, so as we discovered uh, when the three basement windows on the north side were uncovered, they were in pretty bad shape. Uh, so hence the idea to replace uh, all three of them. And I, I need here to make a little correction because the purpose is really to replace all three of them with uh, new casement windows because I, I think uh, the plan suggests only two of them will be replaced. So the three basement windows that were covered, which are in bad shape, will be replaced with uh, new casement windows that, you know, the style you see in Exhibit C, okay? So that's for the basement uh, apartment. Uh, then for the kitchen addition from 1980, so there will be a new window there because uh, right now it's very dark. Uh, so it will certainly improve the, uh, you know, the quality of that apartment. It's going to be a living room. And uh, uh, we can there reuse uh, an existing window, which uh, actually turns out to be uh, apparently a window from the original kitchen be before they did the uh, kitchen extension in the 80s. So it will be even more faithful to the uh, original style of, of the property. Um, and then another little correction also on the north side, uh, the, the windows uh, that we're placing on the north uh, west side, so these are salvage windows. So uh, again, there will be uh, you know, original windows from the house that we found in the basement, and so these are the ones we would put in there on the north um, east side, or, sorry, northwest side on the first floor. So the, um, I just realized that the muntins or mullions are wood. Is that right? In the new, they're, they're a uh, clad, clad. They're aluminum wrap clad, clad in the same, same color as the existing windows. So are they? Do they have much of a profile? Or are they pretty flat? They'll, They'll have, they have, have a profile have. on them. Yes, yes. On, the on, the on the front, the grills. Is that what you're asking? The grill part. Well, just the the um, muntins. I would say on the historic windows, they're just really thin. Aren't they steel or zinc or something? They're, they're metal. Steel. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I just. I was curious about how much on the new windows, how much more the Munton is prominent. Um, no, it's, it's not going to be much more prominent. It's going to look very similar to what, okay. what we have going right now. Okay. And, and I'm the I'm contractor, the contractor on Hello and Ryan Schriefer. And uh, yeah, thank yeah, you for thank us getting this far. It's a pretty <laughs> awesome building. But uh, the, the other thing from my contractor, contractor perspective in bringing this up, up with Pierre is uh, our window wells drain good. Um, but, um, we but we deal, deal with a lot of egress, egress even, even in new houses, houses and you have problems when we have torrential rains, rains and downpours. So, so a big part of this also is hopefully to prevent, prevent any future, future flooding, flooding because, because the way we're, we're doing things with the internal kind of window would work, would work down, down there, there, but if we ever had water build up, I wouldn't have the same confidence as if I was able to have, you know, flashed out everything and put a new system into that. So. And, and, and the prominence, the prominence of the windows, windows will look very similar to what we have existing. And they're the not really seen that easily anyway, right? Oh, you, you can't, can't really. really you won't see them at all because we'll have a fence around it. Like yeah. a, um, you know, guard rail. a guard rail <laughs> fence. So you have to walk right up to see them. Any questions from the commission? Yes. I'm, curious, I'm thinking about the, you know, they filled in the window wells at some point in the past. Uh, did they just leave the windows there? Did they yeah, put yeah. something over them, or did you got soil right up against the glass? They didn't, they didn't have, have soil. soil. They, they had, had uh, put pretty much, pretty much like, like a plywood, plywood 
over the window well. Oh, they left and it. And then they poured over the concrete over that. Uh, so, so it was just an empty space. It was down just there. an empty, empty void damp space. space down there. Yeah, yeah. for okay. ants and other things. So when when the well was uncovered, there was a very strong smell. Yeah. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Okay. And he caught it hours after we opened it up. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Would you be able to describe a little bit the degradation of the original windows? You, you had mentioned that they had, were in bad shape. Could, if you could just elaborate a little right. bit more so on that. So the one that is in worse shape, I mean, w with two fingers, I can break any part I want. I mean, it, 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 that's corroded. That, that's the one that is on the... Uh, on the east side, uh, that one's in the worst shape. I'm not sure why. I mean, all three of them were covered, I think, more or less the same way. Uh, and uh, so th that's, that's the most extreme one. So the structural integrity of the window itself is was, was problematic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because we, we hear a lot of people say there's a problem with old windows. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so yeah. I just want yeah. you to explain fact, part of exactly what that is problem gone. is. I mean, the, 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 there's like a whole part missing, and the part sure. is still there. Again, I can break it with two fingers. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> That's pretty descriptive, huh? Um, any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Does anyone else wish to speak in favor of the certificate of appropriateness? Anyone want to speak opposed to the certificate of appropriateness? Anyone want to speak from the audience? Okay. Commissioners? Discussion? Motion? I'm fine with all of this. I think it's mm -hmm. researched and it all sounds like it's a good thing. So I'm ready to approve this. Okay. Would you like to put that in a form of a motion? Well, I'll give it a try. Yeah. Um, I move that in case HP 2018 COA 02. Uh, the request for the <coughs> certificate of appropriateness regarding a small number of windows that we approve the request, grant the certificate, um, relying on the most excellent analysis that the staff has done. That's my motion. Kevin, is that okay? <laughs> Yeah, that, that's fine. I especially like that last part. The most excellent. Yeah, <laughs> of course you do. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? Do we need to somehow note uh, the um, correction that Pierre made for the new windows versus salvaged windows in the basement? The three instead of two. Correct. Sure. Probably is a good idea. You want to amend the motion? Sure, yeah, yeah. I'd like to keep the motion, as you said, especially with that last part. But note that the three basement windows will be replacement windows per the but That it will be three instead of two. Three instead of two, correct. Okay. You accept the? I accept that friendly amendment. Okay. Okay. Any more discussion? All those in, oh, but, we should Pardon, just, can I, can I uh, speak here? I'm not sure if I'm speaking out of turn. Um, but it, it's actually, it would actually be four windows because there's three on the north side on the north elevation, and then there is the one that I pointed out on the south elevation. Is that correct, Pierre? No. 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 Could you come back up to the table, please? Apparently, you were speaking out of turn. Yeah, the, the window on the south side has always been, uh, it, it was never covered, so it's in good shape, so oh. we intend to just keep it. Okay. Yeah. So, three windows. So, it's three on windows on, on the, the, on north, the side. north side, no, the, the, the basement. Okay, mm -hmm. right, thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm not mm. sure if we can let Kim speak, but I think. No. She believes that it's that it is three on the north side and one on the south side. Because the, the kitchen, is that, is that one? On, on the south side, it's also the basement. So on the south side, we have a also a well, okay, and there's a basement window, and that one seems to be in good shape. So we were thinking of keeping it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So just three on the north side. I I mean, you can give us the option if you want uh, to change it, but pr at this point, we don't think we'll exercise <coughs> that option. Okay, we're good. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right, so the friendly amendment is that three windows rather than just two on the north side will be replaced. And that friendly amendment was accept accepted by the by Trent on the motion? The mover, yeah. By the mover? Yeah. Okay, so I think. Did anybody, left, did anybody left to second it? Um, Matt did. Oh, he did? Okay. Yeah. I'll re-second it if okay. that's important. <laughs> All right, so um, we need roll call, I think, for hearing. Mr. Metcalf? Yes. Ms. Novak? Yes. Ms. Pagliuso? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Okay. Motion approved unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, and Thanks. now I close the uh, public hearing for HP 2018 COA 02. And Kim can come back and stay with us. Kevin, I have a question. I know I saw in something that we were going to talk about the possible downtown historic district, and I'm not seeing it on my agendas that I have here. So when, when are we talking about that? Up next under old business. Oh, all right. Next we have old business, and Kevin will talk to us about the downtown Urbana Historic District. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, I think this, you know, this might be kind of a brief discussion, but um, as you may recall, last year we um, we discussed um, the possibility of of um, submitting a, submitting an application to create a national register district uh, downtown. Um, so we we sort of started started that process on the staff level, but we've just been inundated with uh, with a lot of other cases and things that have taken up our time. So we haven't been able on the staff level to um, to commit our resources to you know to get that nomination put uh, put together. Um, so what I wanted to, but but we really do want to want to create a district downtown. It seemed like there was. You know, like there was a lot of support for that, um, and especially from from Dan Maloney, uh, the owner of the Cohen Building, um, he was really interested in that. Um, so, uh, and we we happen to have uh, we have about five thousand dollars in a historic preservation fund that um, some of you may recall. Uh, I believe it was from a a T-Mobile uh, cell phone. Um, it was it was some sort of a uh, I, I'm I'm not sure of all the details, but but T-Mobile ended up and and some of you, Alice, you may you, it seems like you're wanting to speak about that, so maybe you can um, explain what that's about in a second here. Um, but we have this money. Um, we've spent very little of it over the years, um, so we are wondering as staff if we could use. Um, uh, that money, uh, if, if the commission so so wanted us to, um, if we could use that money to seek an outside consultant who could help write that nomination, so we can actually move this thing forward, because um, we'd like to see it happen, um, but we just honestly we do not have the staff time uh, to do it, so we could use some some paid outside help. So that's all I I just wanted to bring that up for discussion um, tonight. And then, and see what you all thought. Okay, thoughts. Can you explain the thoughts? Um, my recollection is that um, they constructed a cell phone tower without going through the Section 106 process, which is the uh, review and compliance process for thing actions involving federal or state or federal money, state money in Illinois. Um, and I don't know that we, I think we spent a little bit of the funds, so that was part of the mitigation process that we got paid off for the cell phone tower that wasn't supposed to go up. And it's, and it's uh, dedicated for historic preservation purposes, but we just haven't, mm -hmm. you know, there hasn't been um, any, any large enough projects that we've, uh, that we've tagged or tapped into that money for thus far. And uh, I will say I don't I don't know that five thousand dollars is going to mm -hmm. get us that's a full right. a full right. you know full nomination yeah. put together, but it would at least you know it could it could help. 
Well, and the city's done some work. It's not like we're saying, oh, go forth and make this happen. There's, there's been some work that's been, that's progressed on it. Right, and there's, mm -hmm. there's a lot of information out there. Uh, I think it's just a, a lot of it may be just a matter of collecting all of that, you know, all of that info and, and making, you know, making sense of it and putting it together in, a, in the nomination form. Gina? Is there anything we as commissioners can do to help with the research? I think we kind of tried that. <laughs> we had kind of a volunteer group that looked at this. You want to speak? We did, yeah. We, we assembled a, a team of, you know, of willing participants, but you know, as volunteer endeavors go, sometimes there's just, you know, there's not, um, you know, there's not time enough for, for folks to really get committed to the effort. Um, so, and we could certainly tap some volunteers for, you know, as, as part of moving this forward. Um, but we do have this money there, and right now the nomination is inching forward, if that, so. Yep. Are, are, are there, is there a local or are there local people that are, that we could hire to do this, consultants, I guess, or do we mm -hmm. have to go to somebody from Ohio to come in and spend a lot of money on transportation? I think there would be people in that. the state, but I don't know anybody locally that's working as a consultant or that's qualified to. I mean, there has been, the, the buildings have been surveyed for the most part, although some of the surveys are pretty old. Um, but for how many buildings would be in the district about, do you know? I think it was right around 40. Oh, okay. I mean, th there would just be a little bit of description per building or maybe even just a spreadsheet with some details. So mm -hmm. that wouldn't be that involved. It's more the context of the downtown. Right. Um, what air, so are we talking about just Main Street from like where, the, where Springfield splits? and then east from there? Or, I mean, what are we envisioning the district to be? So we had, we had created a map that we ran by uh, the agency formerly known as IHPA. Um, and they, you know, and we had some back and forth and, and we came up with a, with a draft that they seemed quite comfortable with. Um, I think it would go just west of that that split because there's that Kirby uh, tire building that is is significant um, but yeah right about there um, east to uh, east to Broadway I think it went north a little bit um, basically what you imagine as the downtown core would, would be in Any other discussion? I guess my, my chief worry would be that we wouldn't get very far with the 5,000 and then we'd still not have a nomination. Um, but I certainly understand the issue of having volunteers working on it too. So I don't know, I guess could we support staff looking into maybe can you send out an RFP without necessarily accepting a response depending on I'm not sure about that I, I would need to ask uh, folks with more experience with RFPs yeah I just don't um, even know how you'd write an RFP when we kind of realized that nobody could actually finish a district nomination for that we could theoretically break it into pieces, though, couldn't we? If we had somebody that wrote all the descriptions, you know, that would be one of the levels that we'd have to obviously address in it. We, we would just have to maybe parcel it out. Mm -hmm. That would also take identifying the different steps and, and doing an estimate, which is going to require some staff time, I suppose. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, may, I mean, maybe that maybe that's worth it. If if a lot of the legwork is done, then maybe volunteers can, you know, tie the whole thing together or some some other way to do it. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it might be tricky to sort of scope it out where you set all that aside, but I mean, we'd, we'd be willing to take a crack at that. Okay. Well, I would support it. Yeah. I don't, I don't see any reason to hold on to that money indefinitely. Right. I mean, what better 
I can't think of a better use for it yeah. than getting a start on a historic district for downtown. So I, I mean that, if we can make some really good progress with that money, that I'd be mm -hmm. all for that. But I, I wonder if there are any other communities that have done that, yeah. hired consultants, and if they would have some idea of what the cost would be for. Yeah, I think I can. I have contacts um, at the the state historic preservation office, um, and so I could I could ask them if there are if there have been similar endeavors in the past. Do do you want a motion from us or general consensus or? I don't know that we need need a motion, but I think we're unanimous in support of your of looking in into investigating. It. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That'd be great. Then we'll do that. Thanks. Great. All right, we have no new public hearings and we have no new business. Monitoring of historic properties is next. Does anybody have any follow up? Last time when we I think it was the last time we met, we talked about some concerns over deteriorating property at Buena Vista Court. Mm -hmm. Was the city able to look into any? Um, no, we haven't look in, looked into that yet. I think generally then, I, as I recall, Louise Cooney spoke in audience participation, and she wondered if there was something in existing code that would allow us to request, require improvements to properties. rental you could but I don't know what that one is and again Buena Vista Court is National Register and local historic right. district as well right. so we're, I think we were particularly concerned about that do you think um, I hate to say before our next meeting because <laughs> are, we, are we likely to meet next month unless a case comes in probably not okay is the southeast one the one that had that huge tree right next to mm -hmm. it? Is that tree still there? No. No. The I tree's gone, but there's another one on the other side, on the west side, second one in, that's in, appears to be in really bad shape. Maybe we can request to meet to hear more about Buena Vista. Not next month, maybe, maybe July. Yeah. And other things to do. Or you can, if it's if somebody can look into it, can we do an email thing or something? Yeah, I can. I'll I'll find some time to look into it. Okay, thanks. I just hate to let some of these linger. Yeah. And then Gina, you had been looking into the Mumford House. Yeah, I actually went to the. I guess it was a charrette um, for the um, the master plan mm -hmm. when they unveiled that and got all kinds of assurances that Mumford was protected. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, you know, because I specifically asked the question. Yeah. What, and well, and how did they define that? Do they mean just locked up? There's a padlock on the door, no one can get in? Is that how we define More protected? Like, I mean, I, I'll yeah. leave my comments at that. I think I've right. been pretty clear how I feel about yeah, that. Yeah, they weren't yeah. real specific, but they did say that Mumford would be protected. Um, but I had sent, you know, a while back some emails talking about my concerns and sent a whole bunch of pictures that I took, and it was just before school started, so it was last August, and um, got um, nowhere fast. Mm -hmm. Got a couple of responses that basically said, you know, there's no money right now, mm -hmm. no one's looking to do anything with it right now. You know, and it's the 150th anniversary of the university, and that's the oldest building on campus, and, you know, that's where we are. So, yeah, so that's all I know is that, like okay. I said, I went to the open house for the master plan and asked the question, and that's what I was told. Okay. Do, don't they, do they have a new historic preservation officer for the university? That's my understanding, yes. Maybe, I mean, it would be, perhaps it would be interesting to the Urbana public to have that individual invite them to come to one of our meetings. And speak. Perhaps that would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if, if you know, it, and I don't know how that would that would happen, but it would be nice to hear. Okay. Well, we can see when we're going to meet again. So, uh, any other properties of concern? 
the last time you talked about the Royer House and mm -hmm. 801 West Oregon having a new mm -hmm. owner. Mm -hmm. um, and is it the, the is it a rooming house still? Is that mm -hmm. the, the yeah? Okay. It was the person bought it, and it was all under lease still. So uh, there might be some changing in the summer. Maybe I don't know. Okay. It looks just the same. Mm -hmm. They haven't put any new signs up, hmm. the illegal oh. signs, which is nice. <laughs> I think they know better. Yeah. But um, yeah, the person who bought it uh, himself lives in a, a house in the Chicago area that's um, heavily restricted by easements. So he knows how to work under restrictions. So I'm, I'm not concerned about n signs sneaking up. Yeah. Um, any other properties? Can I mention one? Yes. Um, so I happened to go uh, with one of our inspectors uh, just this past week um, to the uh, the ZTA house and went with him on the you know in the interior and the work there is is progressing very very nicely. Um, I took a lot of photos that just mostly of you know of of walls and windows and things, but. Having gone through that house in, um, I think it was 2014, um, it's it's like night and day. Mm -hmm. So, Great. very very heartening. Congratulations and thank you to the yeah. owner. I was actually telling one of our other commissioners that I was walking around the property uh, the other day. I hope you don't mind. I was not inside. I was walking around the exterior, but it's nice to see all the changes. And, uh, you know, I was hoping maybe we could get an invite to come through one of these days. Um, other, other properties? Okay. Moving on then, staff report, do we have anything? Nope. No study sessions. Announcements? Um, we didn't have a chance as a commission to really pull t anything together for um, Preservation Month, but our, uh, there's one Urbana thing. We have an evening in the archives that Brian Adams and I are doing um, in the Champaign County Historical Archives, Urbana Free Library, Wednesday, May 9th, from 7 to 8, longer if needed. Uh, and if people want to bring in addresses or photos or whatever, we're helping people research their properties. And then uh, on the Champaign side of things, uh, Brian Adams is presenting on Joseph Royer tomorrow night at the Champaign Public Library <clears throat> from 7 to 8 o'clock. And he'll be presenting also on Thursday, May 24th about the work of architect Nelson Strong Spencer. Um, Champaign Public Library, 7 to 8 o'clock. So those are our preservation activities and I think some of us kind of decided that things were too busy and and maybe in the summer we could offer some things connected with the tours or a scavenger hunt or things like that so okay any other announcements no um, motion to adjourn this part so moved. Second. all those in favor Aye. Aye. opposed okay we're adjourned for